Hello, everybody, and welcome to Adobe Live from the Sofa here in the UK every day from 12 until 1. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, then that's fine. But the real place to watch this is at behance.net slash live, because that way you can get involved with our fab community. And it's also where you can ask questions of our guest and so much more. Well, I hope everybody's doing well. Today, we are joined by illustrator Michael Driver. Hello, Michael. How are you doing? Hey, I'm, I'm really good, thanks. I'm, I'm, I'm doing okay, thank you. How are you? Yeah, all good here. Thank you very much. Good. It's uh, it's it's good for us all to uh, acknowledge, by the way, how we're feeling at the moment. And I hope everybody's doing all right. If uh, there's anything you particularly uh, need, then Tim does have some handy links uh, for you, which he can share over in uh, the chat. But we want to celebrate, really, uh, our creativity bringing us all together. Uh, and no boundaries, of course, with our creativity, which is a good thing. And that's what we need to do. We need to have our voices. And our voices may take many forms, both spoken and, of course, in what we make. So, Michael, what are you going to be uh, making for us today? What are you going to be showing us? Show us some of your work, of course. And uh, Sure. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, uh, I predominantly work in, like, editorial illustration. I've had, like, the chance to work on, like, lots of other bits and bobs and interesting projects. And um, today I just thought I'd take, like, a rough from a previous project and just sort of work it up, um, give everybody, like, an insight into my work, uh, like my process and um, yeah, just uh, hang out on stream and, and chat with you and chat, chat, with, chat with the chat. There you go. And yeah. that's that's what people and people really do love process. So it's great uh, that we'll get to see a bit of that. Let me just say hello to a few people that are here in the chat. We've got a really good community here of people that turn up very, very regularly. Of course, we've got some new people as well. So hi, always good. Uh, but let's say hello to some of the uh, some of our regulars. Of course, we've got Sandrine here. We've got Kirsty. Uh, we've got Robert here. Uh, I think we've got Sean as well. I haven't seen uh, Steve just yet, but he's got, oh, my friend Pierre. Pierre Etienne is here. Hi, Pierre. Uh, Robert Brock is here. So quite a lot of people already and all eager to see what you're going to, uh, what you're going to share with us, Michael. So you can take it from here and we'll sure. just chat as we go along. Sure, definitely. No pressure at all. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're all friends here man we're all yeah friends. definitely oh god <laughs> um so yeah i so i worked on this article a few weeks ago at, at my in-house role um and i'm just going to be taking uh hey i can do this uh this image and i'm just going to be uh working that up um my process um usually is uh when i get a brief is i'll do some roughs I'll send them to the art director. Um, and if it's a digital format, I'll often sort of mock it up like this. Um, if it's for print, then they'll all be individual files um, just right. so that they can be laid out um, by like the designer in for, for print. Um, okay, yeah. And then and then what I, I, I do once I've sort of had feedback and made any amends that are needed is I'll do um, a color rough uh, I've already picked some colors out just because I'm so nervous that I'll just do a really bad job <laughs> yeah, uh, today fine. on stream and people will be watching yeah. um, that I thought it would make sense to sort of work with some colors I'm familiar with. Um, I use this palette with the other images I made for this series. And, um, and yeah, I build the rough and then from the rough, the color rough, I, I, I sort of go into finals. Um, uh, you'll see I've got lots of tabs open um, I use lots of hand-drawn textures. Um, right. This isn't to say that I don't think like uh, Adobe's offerings of brushes or anything like that aren't like amazing. Um, I just really like still making things and um, and so just sort of like a, a tangibility in my work, I suppose. Yeah. Um, well, it may, it's yours then. It's individual. It's owned by you, isn't it? Yeah. And I just yeah. I like I have such a love for physical things like books mm. and objects, and I I, I really like um, yeah just te like work that feels like it's it's got a certain element of handmade in it. I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So yeah. Um, I guess I should really get cracking. Um, yeah. 
let's <laughs> let's let's see you work it's, it's good do you, do you work mainly in do you work pretty much exclusively in photoshop Your i only work style, really crisp style. yeah um i only work in photoshop um i've been meaning to sort of teach myself illustrator mm -hmm. um because it, it's getting to the point now where like um oh, it's getting to the point now where like I'm getting lots of inquiries and I um, and sometimes they are wanting me to work in Illustrator and, and vector files are necessary for sort of like slightly bigger projects. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I I'm really comfortable with Photoshop and I've been using it for like six or seven years. And um, yeah. Yeah, I, I need to teach myself some more stuff. I feel like it's mm. so necessary at the moment. Did you did you have a formal route into the business? Did you did you go to uni? Did you do all of that? Yeah, I went to yeah. art school. I went to um, I did my uh, foundation at Nottingham uh, NCN, yeah. um, and then on from that, I went to Kingston University, um, and I did the illustration animation course. Although, like, I didn't do much animation, um, mm. and I severely regret that. Like, I wish I had of done a little bit more animation just because it's just so fun and it just has such a diverse offering mm. um, and especially with sort of the way the world is going with digital platforms and um, and sort of everybody moving online it's just such a necessity it's just such a necessity nowadays mm. um, yeah I'm sort of I'm hoping sort of in the next few months I can really start to learn Illustrator and I can start to learn uh, more animation stuff but it's something you can always pick up as you go along isn't it it's it's yeah. one of those things you kind of once you're happy once you can kind of go into i think of like cruise control with uh with what your actual working process you know once the idea the idea generation part is over i don't know about you but for me everything then is is kind of a bit like on cruise control i don't yeah. have to think mm -hmm. consciously too much about what i do so once you th i think you're at that stage you can possibly then go ahead and pick up you know new things from there yeah totally and um yeah i just think it's like uh this point in time is just like a, for me is a really good point in time to just start thinking about diversifying my skill set mm. and, and opening up like further opportunities um I've been doing like editorial work for the last five years. I graduated in 2015 mm -hmm. um, and I've had, I've been lucky. I've been really lucky and it, I think it's important to acknowledge that. Um, but it would be really nice to sort of start working on slightly bigger, more ambitious projects. Um, and I think sort of one of the ways that I can sort of get into doing that is by just diversifying, diversifying my skill set a bit more. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sure. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. That was the <laughs> magical, magical voice of Tim. Tim is our background um, super, super elf. <laughs> and they couldn't hear you. <laughs> right, okay, my apologies. Uh, well, we had we had a mystical voice in our ears, which was just asking mm. Michael to full screen first off, which is now doing on purpose. It's like doing TV with a control room full of crazy people. <laughs> okay, you can get you can get back to it now. Thank yes. You. <laughs> <laughs> so carry on. I apologise. Carry on. I, I, <laughs> it's okay. Um, uh, yeah, so like that's sort of where I stand with it. I I really love Photoshop. Um, it's it's uh, yeah. I I I yeah. I just need to sort of start pushing myself a little bit more. I think um, uh, do some new stuff. Maybe learn Blender or, or like more three D stuff. Um, I don't know. I think I think so much about things that I could be doing, and I think sometimes that sort of clouds just really enjoying what it is that i do anyway um yeah um but yeah you'll see that like as i'm working this image up that like uh i sort of insanely block out all these textures um uh in separate documents and then i end up sort of dropping them in and sort of it, it gives it a nice sort of feeling actually funnily enough um when I was at university, I used to go into the print rooms and I used to steal 
prints from the sort of scrap paper drawer. And I used, I used to have like a big archive of sort of like old etching plates and like old lino stuff that yeah. I used to use in my work predominantly. Uh, but unfortunately, a few, a few months ago, I, I, my hard drive broke and I hadn't got any cloud stuff at the time. And I just ended up losing all of it, which was actually really sad. And I'm sort of in the midst of trying to put all of that back together but it's going to take a while because i don't have much of an access to uh, print rooms at the moment right um yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you know um, it's it's funny michael that early earlier in the week one of our guests um ada de Russ, she was on with us uh, at the beginning of the week and she had a similar thing where she lost a laptop that had a load of her stuff and it forced her to kind of start over with a lot of things as well she found it quite transformative though i find i found it like i lost quite a lot of con like quite a considerable amount of work i lost all my graduate work um oh no uh and i lost uh like all my textures hundreds of textures that i've used in the past um and i lost maybe like my first year or two's worth of freelance work mm. um which to be honest like apart from using the textures i I, I found it sort of strangely liberating um, this sort of like this need to go and make new stuff. And I think that's one of the reasons why I love like making stuff with my hand and like all the textures that I'm using today, I'll, I'll probably scrap them in a, in a few, few weeks or um, make some new ones just because I, I just feel it, it's so important to continue working with my hands. Mm. Um, yeah. So it, it was a bit of sweet, sort of thing that happened and uh i'm still still kind of bummed that i lost some really good etching te textures but yeah i think it i think it's like a i, I think it's good i think it's fine <laughs> i say I quite, personally i quite often use a bit of um block printing ink from what back when i used to do monoprints nice and I, and I still have uh block printing ink here um it's not the same ink it's, 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 it's I was using back back when I was a student but um I do that I get a print roller and I run the print roller dry over various sheets of paper to get a texture. yeah it's it's really it's really beautiful and like the mm. noise and the textures and, and the expressions and gestures you can get out of sort of experimenting uh with printmaking and um and just like gestural mark making you know like some of the stuff that you'll see like for instance on the last tab that I have open, it's just stuff that I've just painted with ink, um, which I'm going to use for some of the earthenware that the lady is um, uh, using. Yeah, um, and yeah, I just find it. I just, I just like having having that time to make stuff. It doesn't briefs don't always let me, so I think it's good to have a bank of stuff backed up, but it keeps things interesting. It certainly does that. Mm. Do you know, you did something as well a moment ago when you took that texture that you bought in from the sketchbook. Yeah. Um, and then rotated it through 90 degrees. I'll be quite honest, that's never occurred to me. <laughs> <laughs> See, I find... You know, so you've got the two overlaid. I think that was really lovely. So I'll be nicking that later on. <laughs> what I find so, like, incredible is that it doesn't really matter how you use anything like people mm. have just such a different way of using it like i'll i'll do something and somebody will be like why did you do it like that like you can literally do it like this and you, you, you find out that you've been spending so much time do i didn't know at one point you could even rotate the canvas it was, it, right it was crazy i spent almost all of my degree not rotating the canvas and sort of drawing with like hands like this and, and stuff it's it was really silly but um i, I suppose you like anything you learn how to use a tool the more you use it yes this is true but it's also whatever works for you that's the thing you know you're yeah exactly concentrating on the result which at the end result which is which is great wow the chat is really busy <laughs> oh wow let's let's just have a look so while you're while you're while you carry on working sure let's just have a look through and see if we've got a few questions for you um they're just, 
we've got a great bunch of people here, um, Michael. That, I mean, I know I never see the chat actually when I'm when I'm doing these things uh, on my own. From this, when I'm the host, yeah. But uh, we've got great people here. Um, there are people who are concerned about your your loss of stuff, I'm wondering if, if any specialist recovery service. I've uh, kept I've kept I've kept my hard drive, um, and I'm when sort of lockdown is over, I'm, I think I'm going to see if I can recover any of it. Mm. But if I'm honest, like some of some of that work, I feel just so uncomfortable about. Like my work's changed so much, particularly in the last sort of year or two. Um, like I really feel like it, it's it's pushed on and. And I don't really feel like there's much love lost over it. Right. It would be nice if you can get back your student work and everything as well. That's yeah. That's really important, I think. The, um, yeah, it's just just general chatter and people enjoying your stuff at the moment. I'm going to do quite a lot of scrolling here as well. <laughs> it's good. It's good. <laughs> but note that they are loving the colours. Thanks. So I find working with color like really hard um i went through a phase of like using the same like the same few colors and i think it it just seemed to progressively get more and more dull and um mm. i now really try um to sort of push myself to use different palettes and and see where they go and and yeah i feel like working out colors sometimes is like doing arithmetic or maths like it's it just can sometimes feel so unbelievably alien to me but then mm. once they're sort of all laid out it, it can just feel so much better like it's so nice when you just sort of like change the hue of one color and then suddenly it just pops a little nicer um yeah have you ever have you ever tried um the adobe color themes extension in photoshop have you ever tried no that? um i used i used i have used Occasionally, um, I've used uh, the website where you can drop photographs in. Color.odoba.com. Yeah. yeah that's, re that's been revamped recently. It's got some um, great stuff on it. And it, it's really good. It's really good for just pushing yourself to use colors that you wouldn't necessarily think about and mm. building a palette. I think the thing is, there's so many colors that you can use. And like I, most of my process um, has like a print making sort of process built behind it like I like to think about images as if they're like lithographed or screen printed or yeah. resographed so it's very much like if green goes over red then green should then be like a dark black or you know like there's this yeah, yeah. multiplying of, yeah yeah despite yeah. despite the fact that I mainly work with um newspapers and magazines that print in CMYK like I I like using the printmaking technique because for me it 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 makes it so much more manageable um, to sort of put things into like three or four colors, maybe five or six if I'm feeling really brave, and just sort of see where I can push those few colors to go. Mm. And it's, it's also a, oh sorry, carry on. Sorry, and it's it's just amazing, like it, it like the tones that you can get with just switching out like one main color with a different color and, and it can really change how like something feels as you look at it. Oh, it's, it's good. The, um, there's also the, there's, uh, do you ever use capture on your, on your phone? Uh, no, I don't. So that's a great place for capturing color inspiration, you know, that you might, might find useful that can generate themes from an image or from a root color as well. So give that a look at. Yeah, I'll, I'll check that out. There's definitely and that's actually in Photoshop as well. There's a version of Capture in Photoshop. Oh, really? Yeah. There's definitely um, colours that I'm like scared of using. Um, like, I, I get really scared of sort of like green, like grass, like grass green sort of colours. I, I really love like turquoises, uh, mm. but like yeah, I'm still trying to work my head around some colours and like purple as well, like. I, I end up sort of like knocking it back and it ends, ends up being blue uh, a okay. lot of the time. And I, I don't know. I don't know if it's a force of habit, but yeah, like I'll get there. I, I just need to keep pushing myself out of, out of the same few palettes. And I, I feel like everything is usually like a derivative of like red, blue, yellow. And then, mm. uh, then what I'm trying to do now is sort of switch one of those out and, and use sort of like a secondary color. Look, there's plenty of, I mean, it's, um, 
there are, I mean, there are so many different ways to approach um, color. It's a, it's a, it's a tricky subject. Um, Definitely. I'm quite into value work at the moment. I'm really okay. taking value into account and, uh, and what that can bring to, because there's an old saying, right? That if you can get it right in black and white, yeah, then it's going to yeah. work really well in color. That's the. Definitely. And like, I suppose like it, well, everything that I do starts out with a sketch and like mm. working out that balance and that negative space is, is important regardless of whether it is in color or black and white. I don't really do much black and white drawing stuff. Um, I pitched on some stuff last week and I had to do some black and white sketches and it felt a little bit alien. Hmm. Um, yeah. That's shaping up nicely. Let's have a look. What we've got here, uh, green and purple. I just saw a thing. People are having trouble keeping up with the chat. So in fact, this is the most animated chat I think I've seen. Um, it is really, really busy. Um, there's That's lots good. of discussion going on around uh, colour. Steve is here. Steve, uh, Steve Festus <laughs> Kossaboom, um joins us every day from New Zealand. No way. That's great. Yeah, way. He does. He comes along from New Zealand. We also have one other. We have one other person who comes along on Fridays. Uh, typically, he's from Tucson, Arizona, and he sets a three forty-five a.m. alarm so that he can watch wow. live. Oh, it's crazy, isn't it? Right? Wow, and, uh, that's great. Well, because of Rufus's idea, why don't we have a stream from the UK instead of you know while this is uh, going? Fantastic. So they go. Hi, Steve, uh, saying hello. Um, Stuart's asking about digital artists swapping to grayscale and back to color to get the tone. That's oh, he's explaining to somebody else about the value uh, method there. Sorry, I, I didn't read that properly. Uh, but Stuart, one of our, our community here, is discussing that that very thing uh, there. And also, Steve, our uh, guest from New Zealand, uh, is mentioning about using capture in Photoshop, which you learned about from uh, from one of the streams with Paul Charney. So there you go. That's great. Yeah. Um, it's great that people tune in every day. I suppose it's like listening to a podcast or watching a television show, but there's also sort of the added bonus of being able to chat and the community sort of draw of coming on every day, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's lovely. And and it, and I, I think uh, people have got involved in other things before um, uh, where they've been drawing at the same time. So we had Rachel Presky on last week um and she was she was drawing in fresco which have you tried that out have you tried i haven't tried fresco no um i've been meaning to um i was talking to octavia brommel about it a yeah few, think a few, yeah, yeah, yeah. A few weeks ago we were sat next to each other at diy art market in london and she was really saying it is really good it's a really sort of mm. good offering um yeah um I, yeah i've not tried it oh no you should definitely give that a go um definitely from there i think the voice of tim is going to ask us to now oh, there you go maximize photoshop again <laughs> yeah so i i feel like um, i'm gonna upset <laughs> i'm gonna upset tim by not maximizing stuff uh, i'm really sorry <laughs> no, no no it's cool it's cool it's cool um but yeah. no you should try it you should try that out and uh just recently, very, very new inside of Capture is this new uh, multicolor swatch thing. So you can draw, let's say you were drawing plant vines with leaves. I mean, there's tons of other things you can do with it. It's absolutely stunning. But you wanted to draw a load of plant vines with leaves. You could draw a small section with a leaf, sample that as a multicolor swatch, and then just go mean ahead. Fresco, Tony, right? What did I say? Somebody's. Capture. I do mean fresco. <laughs> I say capture. I meant fresco. Thank you, thank you, voice of voice of Rufus. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Sorry. <laughs> it's the morning time. <laughs> I did mean fresco, and thanks for the pickup. But no, give it a go. Fantastic. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, I definitely will. Um, yeah, I need to just. Yeah, have a bit of a play. Um, 
I'm, I'm just going back to freelance. Uh, this is, today is my last day at my studio role. Um, oh. Unfortunately, because of everything that's happened recently, um, uh, the studio has let a load of members of staff go. So I'm, it is really sad, but I mean, the, everything that's going on at the moment is really unrelenting. Mm. Um, and yeah, it's I, that's why I keep saying like it's such a good opportunity now to sort of go and Go and try some more stuff out, I think. Yeah. Uh, good time to sort of pause and reflect, I think. Mm. I think a lot of people at the moment are using the using time not only to reflect, but to learn things, to change, you know, to explore different directions that, you know, and and it, it will be important, I think, in the in the time to come to to try and broaden, like as you're doing now, to try and broaden the spread of uh, of what you can do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there we go let's have a look yeah still still plenty of chat going on but really mainly about, about flying around different things quite difficult to keep up with uh, which is great it's great that people are chatting and uh, and uh, people were just talking about the whole grey thing as well and we've got Harry saying that uh, he sometimes does scientific figures for publication and they look just as good in black and white as in color well to me uh that means that you've got the formula right harry yeah definitely yeah. if you've got if you've got all of that if you've got good value contrast and you've got good va good values across then you're doing a good job so excellent definitely um yeah i need to do i yeah i, I think i'm in in a position where i just want to do like lots more stuff mm. um So this, all this brushwork, I'm just going to pick out one that I like, sort of like the gesture and the hand flow, and I'm going to sort of yep. use it as a um, pattern uh, on the lady's kimono. Um, and yeah, I like, I really like changing the tools that I work with um, quite a lot. So I use like a lot of graphite, um, like lots of pencil, uh, uh, lots of ink and acrylics, uh, like I said earlier, lots of print textures. And I think one of the nice things about using brush stuff is you get like the nice texture of the brush, um, but you also get sort of that really organic um, sort of flow of how the ink flows across the paper. The, um, the one that is difficult to replicate really in yeah. a digital, digital medium. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like if I was relying too much on um, drawing it, it would lose maybe some of the, the vibrancy and the excitement of some of the line work. Um, yeah. Do you know, I think that's what I really like about your your stuff, on your your portfolio and your stuff on Behance is is exactly that. It is It has an energy inside of it that comes from... Um, natural strokes used in this way it's very uh, very attractive uh, the your your approach for the gradient um gradient map over the top is is going down very well as well by the way i did notice that oh really uh, yeah uh, yeah oh, that's no great. that's it, it's noticed they're, oh they're taking it all in so I, I, uh, I thought i thought genuinely like people would be watching the stream and being like what on earth is he doing he's no like, they're loving it a free like a free point pencil and filling things in and and, and whatnot yeah it like my work changes uh, has changed a lot and like I, I seem to have about six months of working something i went through like a in, in crazy stage like about four years ago where i used to do like lots of stippling but digitally mm. um and i used to get really bad rsi in my hand i still do get sometimes rsi in my hand Me too um i think that's largely because i use a laptop at the moment so mm. I, I use the trackpad as well as sort of like my stylus a lot and so I think it, it can be quite brutal on my hands sometimes um, but yeah I went through a, a process of stippling a lot and people would say why enough are you stippling by hand you could literally build uh, like a pattern and just drop that in and I just got really obsessed with like this notion of thinking that it was all about the process and if I keep doing it that something will come from that and then I think the only thing that really came from that was that I should stop doing that <laughs> 
I remember seeing somebody on stage at Adobe Max, and this would be about five or six years ago. There was somebody there who used to do all of their work via stippling. Um, really large, very involved pieces. And they ended up losing the ability to do that because they'd done it for so long um, and ignored what their body was telling them. But uh, it, it just meant that he redirected his energy into doing something else. So I if I could, I wish I could remember the name. And if if um, if either Tim or or even Rufus, who's, who's, who's around in the background, can remember the name of that person, that would be really helpful because it was a good story. It just escapes me at the moment the most inventive sort of get around i've seen from that is uh there's an illustrator artist called Macbeth, and he mm -hmm. he does like lots of um sort of disney-esque sort of pieces that are sort of very heavily textured um and he often does a lot of hand stippling um and a lot of his work is sort of very crazily big um, and he had a friend or commissioned somebody to build a tattoo gun that mm. had um, like a fine line. Oh, wow, right. There. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, he yeah, could yeah. just sort of like just move his hand around, just fill in and do all the shading and all the tonal work. Uh, just so, so. That's like, crazy. Yeah, really crazy, really yeah. ingenuitive. Um, um, yeah, stuff like that I go crazy for because I just think that's so so clever so clever like re real good problem solving we're not alone in the rsi front by the way um stuart fickling has uh, 27 years of this definitely gives you rsi um i'll be quite honest i have to quite often sleep i have physiotherapy regularly for for rsi in my, in my wrist um but i have to sleep with braces that keep my hand in this position really yeah 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 so, or well a more relaxed version of that but they have like a bend just here and they go right up my forearm they're like i call them my batman gloves because it makes them more palatable to pop, to pop on <laughs> <laughs> with this steel thing running down my arm but. it's uh, it, it's really horrible and like it really does um point out how important like your hands are like any sort of mm -hmm. loss of ability is is quite scary and there's been times certainly in the last like eight or nine months where i've been working full-time at my studio role and then also freelancing and by the end of the week can really feel the effects of 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 working so much um mm. like yeah we talk a lot about like things like burnout but like physical burnout on my hands has, has been quite not great um yeah. recently um, yeah, I'm looking forward to giving them a slight break. Yeah, um, this weekend. Even just a change of a change of operation is sometimes a a good way uh, a good way to do it. It's and keep it going. And, and and eventually, you know, if it does come to the point where you need any help with it, just listen to the advice you get. I think is definitely is, is the best thing, and just take it easy. Definitely. Um, I just need to just so Corey's asking about stippling what stippling is stippling um Corey is basically where you use lots of dots I can I can do some now if you want oh there we go here we uh, are so you're gonna get a live demo <laughs> fantastic uh, so yeah this is crazy if you imagine this entire space uh let me start a new layer uh stippling's like this uh I tend to put this on when I do it because then everything is uniform oh sorry uh so it's it's just lots of dot work and then you can sort of build the dot work out create gradients sort of as the gap out and and yeah it's just lots of sort of minute dots and they they, they build up tone uh, and they can really help to make an object or, or something feel sort of slightly three-dimensional um yeah i mean now nowadays what i tend to do if i if i'm wanting to do something like that is i'll i'll drag like drag this square uh and then i'll go to the gradient tool do dissolve maybe put it down to 67 50 25 whatever it is that is needed at the time and just sort of drop it like that and it Perfect. gives it a similar sort of a, sort of effect um gives it a real nice sort of print 
feel, but doesn't destroy your hand in doing so. Yeah, um, that's a good way to do it. Dissolve is one of those blending modes, by the way, that people often miss out on because they try it, they switch something to dissolve and nothing happens. And the reason for that is it needs a sort of another level of, it needs transparency in order to work. So it has to be less than 100%. But yeah. no, look at how effective that is. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I used to, at one point, use noise quite a lot. Um, mm. I used to, when I used to do hedges, I used to do is it like pointillism pointillism like i get, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. get like a block of color and then i kind of related but yeah. yeah yeah and then i and and that sort of for a while made sense to make things like bushes and hedges mm. um yeah as you can see like my process sort of sits really be between sort of being very digital and and being hand drawn there's, there's a lot of sort of messing around with things i, I think no oh, that's lovely Let's just have a quick uh, look. So, yep. Yeah, so that that you are uh, both Corey and Sandrine. Your question on stippling has now been answered. Thank you very much for doing that, Michael. That's brilliant. That's okay. Uh, so, oh, what are we talking about? We're talking about drives on there. All right. Okay. Let's have a look. Well, no. Uh, so yogic stretching apparently is good. Catherine has said that she does yogic stretches for RSI to keep it at bay. So uh, that's worth uh, looking at. Definitely. I actually did like and a monkey paw exercises. Lots of this. I feel like yeah. always down here and um, particularly here. And I don't know if this is because I, I hold my phone. I have a very small phone, uh, one of the, the old iPhones. And I, I feel like it's because I hold here like a lot and that that also causes me problems mm. um yeah but if anybody's got any any tips and tricks please feel free to sort of drop them in the chat and i can go back through later and sort of have a look what what other people use to sort of combat it um i did put out like a slight twitter poll a few months back and it was really handy listening to sort of different people talk about what what helps them with it well, it's for them. Yeah, absolutely. My friend Julia is here, Julia Seeger, uh, who was just on the German stream before this, actually. So Julia's been a host um, this week, but today she was actually doing some amazing work uh, in Illustrator. So hello, Julia and Andreas, uh, quite often at the German stream as well. Uh, and Tim, our own Tim, is saying that we could cheat uh, in Photoshop and create a stipple brush with brush scattering, which is also true. I don't think it's really cheating, Tim. I think it's production technique. I think if you're getting the uh, the thing done, it's efficiency. We like that. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I seem to like flip between sort of wanting to work really efficiently, but then also just really enjoying the process of just like, yeah. this texture doesn't work. Maybe I need to go back and draw something out or maybe I can try something else. And I, I really love that. I like love briefs that come in that allow me to have just a little bit of time to sort of just play. I feel like that's a really nice comfort zone to have. Um, I think it's, well, I mean, the, the way you would describe that's quite, it's almost meditative. Meditative. The other, here's me tripping over that word. Ruth was tripping over it the other week. Meditative. Definitely. Uh, once you get into that kind of zone uh, of working. Definitely. Um, but yeah, I, I admit that like it, it makes no sense to sort of stipple loads of stuff. But at the same time, yeah, it's it's really therapeutic. It's really therapeutic. Mm. Um, but it doesn't work if the brief is like a, a day or two. <laughs> no, that's the thing. That's what you have to balance the production techniques against the desire to uh, do that. Julia, by the way, is uh, is loving your work. Thanks. Uh, from here so get a chance to check out julia's work she's fantastic definitely definitely will um i've been really enjoying the streams actually I, I, right. i've watched a few um dan like i watched like a few of dan Mumford's one yeah um, good in the dan. past yeah i really like like dan's work um he's actually one of the reasons that i like got into illustration he used to be on a mm -hmm. t-shirt forum called uh minties or empties uh, there used to be loads of them that used to be on it and he was sort of like one of my first sort of windows into illustration. Um, I was fortunate enough to meet him a, 
a few um, a few months ago. Uh, he's a really lovely bloke. Oh, he is. He's fantastic. And his draftsmanship is just like genuinely incredible. Mm. Like it's, you know, I, it's just so unbelievably good. Um, yeah, extremely jealous of how he uses color and just like line work as well. It's, it's, it's super work. Oh, yeah, so he's got this process is completely nailed. He's uh, he's got quite, I've got quite a few of his prints actually back at my house. Is off just off down there. Um, and uh, I've got quite a few. We have a bar. We won't have a bar for much longer. It's being demolished. But the um, the bar was there when we bought the house. <laughs> but I've got quite a few of Dan's prints in there, actually. Uh, what uh, prints have you got? Have you got ones for... Oh, Matt, I've got... Uh, no, I've got some of the stuff he did. He gifted me a couple, actually, a little while ago. I'm trying to remember now exactly what I have got. I'm, everything's in tubes at the minute to go... Um, into storage next week but i've got some of his star wars stuff in there nice uh, they're, they're really the gaming things i don't think i've got one of his rick and morty um or have i i may have one of his rick and morty things um but no i've got a few and he sent me a gift of some which i don't think i've actually <laughs> I, i've looked at since i opened them and thought these are good i'll get them framed Bang, they go into the uh, I just, um, I've just recently moved house. Uh, I've just moved from London to Brighton and um, like looking at all of the stuff that I've gathered over the last couple of years and working out what's going where is just such a, a, like, a lovely thing to do. And also mm -hmm. infuriating when you realise that you don't actually have enough space on the walls for everything without it feeling sort of really, really cluttered. I feel like I go to so many comic fairs and zine fairs and buy so much work and I just end up having sort of a mass hoard of things that I can never actually properly display. It's hard, isn't it? You have to rotate them around. So uh, Yeah, um, absolutely. A lovely friend of mine bought me, uh, it's Julia actually, bought me a box of um, of prints of Marvel gouache work. Wow. And uh, there are something like 70 prints or something there. And so I've just got an easel um, over there, like a small easel, and can just pop them on there and just have them there for a few days and then change them over. That's really nice, though. Yeah. That is really nice. Um, I'm just sort of in in the mode of, like, setting up our home studio and buying bits of furniture and sort of laying things out. I've got, like, a ridiculous amount of, wow, they're beautiful. They're really beautiful. Crazy. Yeah, they're crazy good. Um I'm just in like the 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 process of like laying out all of the toys and action figures that I've collected over the years and all the kids books, vintage kids books, old comics, normal comics, artist books, artist monographs, reference books and it's just like I look at all the stuff and I think oh god I've just hoarded so much and I I know will hoard so much more by the end of this. It's silly. <laughs> it doesn't get any better. I can tell you from experience. It, it really doesn't. It really yeah. doesn't. Um, but yeah, like just even the action figures I have is just silly. But uh, it, Funko Pops for me, tons of them. Really? Yeah. Um, yeah. I never. I've not got into Funko Pops. I got into like vinyl toys first. Mm. So like lots of stuff by like Gary Baseman and Frank Kozik um uh like king ken which is like james jarvis is are they in that book i'm plastic are they in the book yeah they might i'm be. plastic and i'm plastic too designer Maybe. toys that because i mean of course that's the great thing that 3d printing gives to us these days it's it's fairly easy to yes definitely I, yeah. I, I actually saw the other day there's a cartoonist uh called jack teagle mm. um, i think he's one of the uh, he's got some ties to Adobe, actually. I think he's, I can't remember what it is. Um, but some, he, he does like lots of um, sort of versions of pop culture characters, but in his own style. Yeah. Uh, really lovely work. And um, somebody contacted him and made like a 3D version of one of his characters, uh, one of his Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle characters. And oh, really? Honestly, so cool. I'm actually sad I don't have access to a 3D printer to be able to get get one printed up because they're offering the files out um yeah 
so yeah i i i love like loads of the the old school vinyl toys um and now i have a habit of collecting a lot of super sentai stuff which is like the uk version is is like power rangers i think yep. it's just because when i was a kid i was only allowed the one megazord and i had to share it with my brothers uh and lots of kaiju and godzilla stuff um as you can see i'm like go through an absolute hole of collecting collect so much stuff but um, it's it's good though and it all feeds you know all goes into here and gets mixed up into into what you, you actually put down on on paper on screen i think do you think though or is that just like hoarders saying <laughs> saying that saying, <laughs> validating saying that, their, like, like validating their it. habit <laughs> No, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with I think so because <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what I say and then I catch myself sometimes being like but is that actually true like am I hoarding for the sake of just hoarding this uh, either way I like it and, exactly. and that's fine and I think it's nice to have your own collection or museum of stuff and even if people do come around and think that you're absolutely crazy for collecting kids toys it's I think it's fine I, to be honest, yeah, saying well, kids' toys isn't fair. Like, yeah, you know, but you know what I mean. No, not toys. Definitely not toys. Not toys. <laughs> Some of them. <laughs> Julia, by the way, uh, is loving your workflow. Um, and as are others. Hey, yeah, there we are. There's a lot of discussion going on today. This is great. I don't have the numbers for, the, the, for how many we've got uh, viewing on here. Maybe Tim could whisper that into my ear at some point if he can see it i know we've got a couple <laughs> 10 billion 10 billion people wow 10 billion people yeah that makes me want to close my laptop and sit down uh no i, I think he's actually um he's yanking my chain as well <laughs> as we would say. but uh they're encouraging some people are going to start picking up rotring pens that's so good go. um if you are thinking about doing that, um, what I would suggest is is getting architectural ones with metal tips um, because sort of the cheaper ones that you can get at art shops, um, the, the fibre, they either split, which yeah. actually makes a really great texture, um, but it, it doesn't work good as a pen after that. Um, but yeah, the metal tip ones uh, are just really solid. Um, and yeah, sometimes the fibre can split and sometimes the fibre actually ends up going into the pen and then you just lose the pen, the use of the pen completely. The only thing is with the metal tip ones, you then need a sonic cleaner to clean them periodically because especially with the finer um, the finer tips, they clog over time. Oh, really? Yeah, and then you need a sonic cleaner, which is not a huge expense. They're like, But it's basically a tray that pulses through it and it shakes the tiny particles of ink out of the nib. Uh, wow, and, and then you can use it. Uh, I see. I, I'm, I come from an age where where we had to use those things because there weren't any computers. So. Yeah, but like I, I would still like I'd like love to get an airbrush and just like try out airbrushing. Like I, I've got a friend um, whose dad makes um, artworks for Magic the Gathering, mm. um, and he used to do like incredible, incredible, incredible um, airbrush paintings, and just to have such control over like something like airbrushing is just incredible mm. that's where um, i started out i was an airbrush artist oh, they, they're great things they're just yeah they're, they're so cool and i'm not really sure how much how much they are or or if it if it I wouldn't would be know now. i've got yeah. two i've still got two i've got a deville b super 64 e here which is still in its original magic marker box uh, and I have an Aztec 3000 S. I have no, I'm, I'm going to find out for you, though, Michael. Um, oh, some people have just got rid of their airbrushes. Well, go and get it back. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. Um, also, uh, uh, Caroline said, uh, before you go doing the yogic uh, stretch exercise for your wrist, you should consult with your doctor first just to have a look. Yeah. Robert Brock has got a sonic cleaner. Who was hoping it was like a sonic screwdriver? Well, you were disappointed then, Robert. I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Aldi sells sonic cleaners on occasion, apparently. Really? That's amazing. But, but you can, you, I guess, because you can use them for jewelry as well. So if you've got jewelry that oh, needs okay. cleaning, you can use a sonic cleaner for that. I'm just thinking, why would Aldi sell sonic cleaners? 
but that's they sell why. lots of like strange stuff in that middle aisle like it's it's quite the gold mine sometimes oh but the quality of the food is fantastic so <laughs> but yeah. anyway it's not an advert for aldi <laughs> <laughs> imagine um, if it was <laughs> <laughs> that would be so funny if we had if an, we had an aldi pre-roll before um <laughs> Imagine that'd be funny. Yeah, that would be quite funny, right? Do you know what? I'm just having a quick look for you. Uh, now this looks very. This might be a more modern version of mine, but it looks like they go for between between eighty and two hundred quid. Different. Uh okay different sets so not bad of course you'll need a compressor as well i mean you can use cans the only thing is with cans you know like cans of compressed air sure yeah they they spit because the can can't ensure a consistent delivery of air that's that's the trick with airbrushing yeah well it's not the trick because there are other tricks like controlling your finger pressure uh, sure. backwards and forwards and up and down but uh, no give it a go yeah but, definitely um, i think you'd love it even if you started out by making textures, like stippled textures for that, because you can just overspray an airbrush at a low angle and you can get that beautiful texture from there. So. I, I, just making things by hand is just, it's so. Glorious. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's really yeah. fulfilling. Um, and we've got some people here who, who've never seen an airbrush and some who, which is fine, by the way. They're not the sort of thing that are normally hanging around in people's houses or indeed in studios these days. And others who've got... D has got one, but hasn't got around to using it yet. So... Uh, no, and also, I'm, I'm reminded that other supermarkets are available, yeah, but they don't have sonic cleaners in the middle aisle, and to be fair. Um, rotring, rotrings are popular. <laughs> good, good. I... D I I went out like a few months ago and, and bought like a load of new sort of stuff and I haven't yet got around to using it. I bought, um, you know, the scissors that have like the waves in them. Uh, yeah. And in my head, I'm, I'm going to do something with them, but I've not yet worked out what it is, whether it's making some new patterns or... Um, oh, do you mean like the fabric scissors, like fabric shears? With it, that have got that... Kind of, they're more like kid, kid scissors. Like, right. uh, like, they like when you cut, they have like a wave sort of cut. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like I, I bought a brush pen and and some more fine liners. Yeah, with, with the hopes of like hopefully using them at some point. Um, yeah, I used to be such um, such a pen fanatic while I was studying. I used to like buy heaps of them. Uh, and just as my work has sort of moved slightly more digitally, I've just kind of fell off using them. But no, no, no apologies necessary for, for me or for, 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 for me. For, I'm loving to hear that. And you're talking to someone who's just just spent time making a movie just about pencils. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. But um, yeah, people are still talking about airbrush and rotring. Well, that this is very, very unusual. Um, That's great. Yeah, brilliant. And someone's got a Devilby 63. Perfect. Wow. Brilliant. I'm loving seeing this shaping up, Michael. It's really, really good. Cheers. Really good. Um, I like, I've been doing this thing at the moment where when I'm, when like, because I'm really aware that like a lot of my work is very, very flat and I'm trying to bring in some more things that feel sort of slightly more three dimensional. And even if it doesn't necessarily make sense, um, if you're looking at it, like for instance, this big circle wouldn't, it would be more sort of, close together mm. I'm trying trying to work out ways to really keep it refreshing and interesting and and have some sort of like graphic um appeal to it I suppose um yeah and this this thing that I'm doing the sleeve is something that I've been doing a fair amount with other bits of work at the moment um and yeah it's just changing things up like that I, I just are just nice and figuring figuring shapes out trying to make it seem slightly less flat no, tons of, and, then, and for those of you that are, you know, that are maybe at home and, you know, maybe stuck for something to do, there are plenty of places you could go out with your device. I mean, the chances are you've got a phone with a camera on it. 
why not use that to explore textures in the place you live find things that uh that you can explore texture with take those images bring them into photoshop turn them into um, grayscale images and then into bitmap images because you could use those as textures in both Photoshop and Illustrator. So you try those and also try what Michael's done here. So scan some actual physical things that you've made um, to bring those into your work and try that out. I think we have just about five minutes uh, or so left of natural time. Sure. Uh, Michael, we're, we're okay to go over a little bit. So that's okay, fine. Okay, cool. Well, let's um, do that, I reckon. Yeah. I'm enjoying myself. Good. A little bit stressed. <laughs> there should be no stress. <laughs> it's actually when you watch people doing the stream and they're chatting and then they're making work and you're like, you, you don't ever really appreciate how hard it is to sort of chat and also make work as you're doing it. It's, it's oh, you're really doing a great hard. job. <laughs> um, cheers. Um, but yeah, as you were saying about textures, um, some of the first stuff that I did, um, at university was like taking photos um, of like textures that appear like on the floor, scanning bits of fabric in. And it, it's a lot of trial and error and adjusting stuff and, and seeing how it, seeing where it goes and what happens with it. But it's really good fun. And it, it's, it's a really good way of freeing things up, I think. Um, it, it's really easy sometimes to get really stuck with a pen or a pencil and think that that is like that can only be your process and and sort of changing things and sort of messing around with this stuff is is, is fun it's mm. important all no, right it's very good don't forget um that we're here every single day weekday every weekday 12 to 1 uh, with a different guest every day tomorrow um it's back to the tony harmer show it's the tony and rufus show uh tomorrow for you where we'll be doing some uh, some fun stuff we'll be doing some more animation but this time we'll be staying mostly in uh, photoshop for it not completely but just mostly in photoshop so do check that out tomorrow uh let's see do you know that people are talking about rubylith now there must be about half a dozen people on here who remember uh, rubylith uh, apparently i'm the lord of pencils <laughs> Uh, we were talk I was talking about pencils with with this uh, with my friend about this and Ticonderoga is a is the American school pencil the Ticonderoga number two, which for us is an HB. Here's a quiz for you then, people. Where does HB come from? Do you know, Michael? I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> I always joke when I listen to sort of like creative um, podcasts that there's always like a short segment, which is about like what tools you use and like which pencil you like. And I really love it when people like nerd out about it. Um, do you know my favorite pencil actually is like a carpentry pencil? Um, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not because, not because the lead's any good, but like just it's such a, it, it fits really well in your hands. Um, yeah, I don't know if anybody, I suppose you're a pencil genius, right? So have you ever seen anybody? Well, I like them. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have, you, have you ever seen anybody like make carpentry pencils, but with lead that can not Yeah, feel? so Conte do, Conte do, uh, I have one, but it's in my pencil roll, which is actually in my dining room uh, at the moment. The only pencil I have here on my desk is this Pearl Blackwing nice. it's on my desk. Um, I have one pinned up here as well, which is an Adobe uh, Blackwing. Adobe commissions some Blackwing is draw every day for uh, the launch of Fresco. Uh, but yeah, I have a I have a Conte, uh, which is a super black uh, pencil, but that's effectively a woodworking pencil. Okay. That's brilliant. My favorite, however, personally my favorite, is the uh, Mitsubishi Hayuni uh, 10B, and I import a couple of boxes of those a year. Um, Glenn Keane, the uh, animator who created uh, The Little Mermaid and uh, loads of other things as well, he switched me onto those um, a few years ago. I met him, um, we were chatting, and he was also drawing A Little Mermaid for uh, one of my daughters. Oh, um, nice. It's her favourite thing. Nice. So, That's really lovely. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just, I love stationery. But then as you mm. use it more, it gets dirtier and grimier. And then suddenly you, you find yourself like just wanting to buy new stuff all the time. Um, yeah. I do like a lot of my roughs in um, just on normal like printer cartridge paper. Um, 
but I really like a heavy stock, uh, like C white Brighton, like 280 sort of okay. yes. like grain for when I'm doing like ink, inking stuff. Yeah, yeah I, th I buy um, pads from Arteza. Arteza has some nice heavyweight blocks that have a really good tooth uh, on the paper. Um, Gareth is asking uh, if if I know if Michael uses a Wacom tablet or a Surface iPad for input. Uh, you're using a, a Wacom Studio tablet, I think, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, I'm using like a 13-inch uh, Cintiq uh, um, HD one. Uh, yeah. Before, I was using like a really old uh, bamboo that I bought when I was like 18 maybe even younger than that actually um and i found like the switch over to a cintiq was it was a bit of an in, it was it's an investment um to go over to the cintiq but it has saved so much time and there's an element of using um bamboos or uh, other tablets that don't have screens uh that, that it feels almost like blind drawing sometimes you're almost death guessing where you're making the marks and yeah i know that as you use the product more you sort of get more intuitive with it and work out where exactly things are when you're putting your pen down but i find that yeah using the cintiq um and using Direct. tablets sort of like that that it it really makes it a lot easier um for drawing mm. absolutely like more natural so. um, i just want to answer uh, the thing about hb by the way um because we've had a couple of guesses is it hard black or hard blackness. Well, in popular usage, uh, and certainly in America, that's how they interpret HB uh, from there. But the actual answer for HB is from the inventors of the grading system, which is a Hartmuth and Budweiss from the Cohen or Pencil Company. Uh, they're the people who invented the grading and created the grades. And then at a similar time, Nicholas Conte um, created the American grading system, one, two, three, and four. But because Americans uh, mainly used pencils for stationery at that time. There were only four grades. There you go. A little bit of pub quiz knowledge for you. That is mind blown. Knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> they, I, I, I did tell you, I have literally just finished a movie about pencils. <laughs> um, but there you are. This has been some people's favourite stream so far. That is uh, that is lovely. Uh, That's great. Uh, that Thanks so. for having me, and I'm glad that you're all enjoying it. Um, Oh, look, more than enjoying it that's honestly it's so busy but i do think we are going to have to start to close uh, yeah. out in just a couple of minutes um so uh just checking for any uh last minute things here yeah really just uh just praise for what you're doing uh, andreas said thanks everyone another fun stream um some people have just got a screen tablet um uh it's been an awesome stream uh your work they're loving your work i've really enjoyed watching your work michael thank is, you ever thanks. so much for thank you for so much for us. tuning in and asking me to be part of this it's been really good fun it's been really good fun there we go so any other closing words or shall i uh any any last minute message for uh for the community here or uh thanks for watching um i hope that all of you are staying safe um and looking after yourselves and your friends and family uh and thanks to adobe for asking me to do this and yeah i guess that's it uh, have a great day wherever you are perfect there you go so there we are people don't forget come back tomorrow it's the tony harmer show on friday and as i said earlier uh be with us every weekday 12 to 1 and the conversation doesn't have to end at this particular point we have our own discord where we can carry on the chat and tim will be adding that link in fact he's just done it as i blinked again he's amazing has just done that for me so we'll see you there but for now uh, from myself and from michael and to all of you the rest of the community stay safe have a great rest of your day hope you've been really inspired and uh, see you tomorrow take care now